Welcome back to The Morning Show on XL7 TV. It's time for This Week in Real Estate with Bob Zadora. Yes, sir. Century 21, Lee Mac Realty, the Z Team. How are you, sir? I'm great. I'm great. You're always great. I, you know, I, I really am. In the grand scheme of things, life was very, very good for Bob. He and Linda and the whole, the, whole Z the whole Z Team and just the whole operation, my sons. I mean, we've been blessed in a lot of ways. Yeah. Truly. You know... Uh, on Wednesday, we had the Master Gardeners here. Yes. And we talked about how and why did you come to this area? And, you know, they both had a good story about what brought them here. And, and they talked about different organizations they, they are involved in. I'm not sure that I ever ask you that question. What brought you and Miss Linda to Mountain Home? And better yet, what made you stay? After 9-11... Uh, we went to the boat show in McCormick Place. Okay. And they had a houseboat, because you could do things like that there in McCormick Place. They had a houseboat in the show. So I'm there with Linda and I and my sister and her husband, and we're walking through, get on the houseboat. I says, you know, I says, what if next September, for the anniversary of 9-11, what if we're on a houseboat in the middle of Missouri? because it was set up over here on uh, Table Rock. Mm -hmm. I says, because they have a tendency to repeat anniversaries. Right. And we were, still, we were still fresh enough with everything, so it was top of mind. So we rented a houseboat. And it was us, the boys. Um, we set up theme nights for the nights that we were out when we dock. We had Mexican one night and we'd have all music playing on the stereo and everything we had italian and we it was just like four days of heaven so while we're down there i'm pulling into the marina one of the marinas to get gas and i had hit a boat i had a 27 footer up on fox lake uh and so i get there and i look and there's these <laughs> massive marinas and the topography is like this i said what do you do with all these boats in the winter? Because up there, you got to haul them and winterize them, shrink wrap them, big process. He goes, well, if it gets really, really cold for a really, really long time, I might get a little sheet ice out there. And I looked at Linda and I said, we are far enough south. Because I knew we weren't going to stay in Chicago. We knew that right. I wanted to get away from the winters and all the usual suspects. And we... Uh, we started looking. So I had a job at the United States. Now, the internet in 1990, excuse me, in 2002 wasn't the same as it is now, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I'd go half times at the basketball games, things like that. I'd go down to my office and I'd start to look. I'd start to look. We started finding houses. Um, the, the real, I, I asked a couple realtors for maps because, I mean, you, you get the address, but you can't tell, well, I don't know where these streets are. One realtor responded with the map. She was my girl. That was it. And we, uh, that summer, we started coming down and just kind of looking. We had thought that we would open a resort because we had some knowledge of that. I have some knowledge of the RV business and the RV industry. Uh, there's a lot of stuff up there, actually. That <laughs> uh, <laughs> is not as much as you have, but, I, but there is a lot of stuff up there. So we thought that that was what we would do, would uh, open up a little resort. Well, we came down and we started looking and the cost of the resorts for what they wanted it was like I'd have to get another full-time job to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. So, and they needed work and things. So, I, I, we were down and we were staying. We used to stay over um, across the hotel across from Harps. Was it a Radisson or a Ramada? No. Now it's, it was a chain. But anyway, the woman used to keep beautiful gardens in there. The Best Western. Best Western, okay. They, she had beautiful gardens in there. And so we'd sit outside by the pool, and I'd have a cigar at night, and we'd go through the magazines. And we had, um, I said, you know, I said, I don't think this is going to work. I said, but I really like it here. She said, oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that. <laughs> she felt the same way. I said, finding something to do has never been a problem for us. We'll find something to do. And we started looking. We started changing the search, started looking for houses, found a house, um, came down for took the houseboat again the following year 
had it all loaded up and we had our closing date was on the same time as long as we were down here it was the same time as uh, the houseboat and Linda came down in October and I came down then in the following May I told them uh, I still I still had a I was I quit the police department in April 15th and I still had a I had a real job with the United Center and so I told them that I would stay until the end of the season, I got everything wrapped up and got replacements and all the other stuff. But this is, we came here and this was home. We just, there was no, there, there's still that place up in Chicago where my mom and my sons lived, but this became home. And, and I think that that made it much easier for us and for everybody in, involved with us because we weren't trying to. We weren't trying to do that. If only, you know, this would be a great place. If only, you know, you could tell this mm -hmm. is what's here. And they, it's been here for a long time, and they're not going to change. You could, if only, yourself to exactly. just stay where you're just at. Stay, and, and I tell people that. I, if we're riding around, and I get to like the third, if only, I tell them, dude, stay home, stay wherever home is, stay there because you're just not going to be happy. They're not going to change for you, first of all, and. You're, you're not going to be as happy as you would be if you say, this is pretty nice here. You know? mm -hmm. and, it, and it is. I mean, there's, there's no place like it. <clears throat> and we're still moving houses here. And we are still moving houses. Yep. Then it was out with some people the past couple of days. She's been out with a couple of people. Uh, they wrote an offer. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think they're going to counter and go back and forth, but that's just part of the, part of the business. And... Uh, but there's people that are down, and uh, there was Danny put a house up. Uh, one of the other people in the morning meeting had had a uh, place up, and they had like you know seven showings in the first four hours type things. So there's people that are interested and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Right price and the right product. You know, if you if you got a if you got a house that's from 1968, and you really haven't done anything to it, it's still got the shag carpeting and the olive uh, or uh, avocado green uh, fixtures in the sink and in the tub and things like that. Uh, you maybe not get as high of top dollar as, as you may want, but you've lived in it all those years. And that's got a lot to do with it, being able to, to do it. To, to, <coughs> you, you're going to live somewhere. You know, it's good to live in someplace good. That, that's a nice part of it. Well, my house was built in 1968. We remodeled in 1978, so it ought to be good. Yep, yep. Put a new oh, roof on in 78. Yeah, right. Put a <laughs> new roof on it in 98. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you, and you got to be realistic with some of this stuff. I mean, the, the, market is, the market has some saggy spots in it. There's no question. I mean, the, the interest rates have hurt people. Um, it's hurt the first-time home buyers probably more than anybody else. Uh, a lot of the old-timers, when they come down, uh, they're going to bring a little more cash with them because they had equity in the home mm -hmm. that they left. And uh, there's people that have been staying here in mm -hmm. RVs. I mean, all these RV parks are still full. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are filled with people that are waiting for a house to come up, for their house to come up. They may have, they're, they're shopping right along, and they're here. They want to, they got money they want to spend, but they're not going to be, you know, they they're also want to hurry to do it. No, they, they, they know what they want, and they're, you know, you talk about the first-time home buyer. They got a double whammy. Yeah. The price of the home, the values of the homes, the prices of the homes have gone up so much. That's hit number one. When things start settling down and started maybe not retracting, but maybe settling down a little bit uh, to bring that price back toward them, then the interest rates went up. Right. So exactly. in their in their world, that's just a double hit of price increase. Oh sure, which hurts them very much. So it's going to be a first-time home buyer. They f they flex the rules a little bit. You can borrow money from a grandparent. They can gift you money. Right. You've got, there's there's a few every, more options every, that every now they've and got. then. They've got some options there. But first-time home buyer, the best thing I can tell you to do right now: keep your nose to the grindstone. Start sacking away as much as you yeah. can for that down yeah. payment. Yeah, because it's not the price of the home; it's the cost of the home. It's what does mm -hmm. it cost you? every month to stay in that yep. home and that that's kind of gets lost sometimes in the in the granite and stainless you know it's what is it going to cost you to stay here that's the important thing it doesn't matter what it, i'm going to say it doesn't matter what it costs but is that doesn't affect you because over a 30-year mortgage a point of interest isn't really going to make that big of a difference mm -hmm. but what is it comes out of your budget it's your debt to income ratio so That's the the importance affects. of being pre-approved just.
can't be overstated. And if you were a while ago, go back. You may have gotten better. You, it's worth it to stay on top of those types of things if you're an active home buyer. If you're going to wait and you're just kind of kicking tires, just kind of, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, it's not as important. But if you're, if you're in a place where you're seriously looking to buy something, because you're going to need that pre-approval letter, that is the first thing, the first thing we ask for on offers on the homes that come in on our listings. Where's your pre-approval letter? Who's it from? Mm -hmm. That's the other part of it. Rocket Mortgage and all these other off-the-wall Internet things, they're not here. They may tell you, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, oh, yeah, you're good. You're, and then you start sending them your stuff. Now they've got all your stuff, all your information, all your tax returns, your birthday, everything. And then, it's, yeah, well, we, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Like two weeks before closing. So... And we've had it happen enough that it makes a difference. And the importance of using local banks, local banks, and I, and I preach that all the time, local banks. Because you can sit across the table with somebody. You can make help to make those decisions with them, and they're there. You're not getting on the phone to some guy who's on the beach in Puerto Rico. you got Alan Moore or whoever sitting across the table from you saying, yeah, we can do this. Or Chris Nassari. When and you next, come out of Chris Nassari's office. We're going to talk about that real quick. Yeah. And next week in your stead, we'll yes. be, Chris will be here. Yes, he will. And I'll be able to hit him with some questions oh, that, yeah. that will be important. Yeah. We better look at some numbers. We better. Whoop, tick tock. Am I moving the microphone around? Yeah, you're good. Okay. <laughs> Got to make sure. Force of habit. This week in real estate, there were 37 new listings come on the market, three commercial properties, 15 parcels of land, 19 homes came on the market. They range in price from $1.3 million to 73000 uh, one of them's taking a backup. Uh, 26 sales, seven parcels of land, 19 homes sold. They ranged in price from 66,000 to 415,000. The average sale price this week was 172. Uh, of those 19, 12 uh, were came in at below asking price. So, just the way the market's moving. Uh, 86 days on market, a total of 3.2 million in residential real estate closed this week. 11 properties expired, and if you're one of those who expired and you're looking to try a different venue, uh, give my honey a call. We're very good at following up on what, where you've been before. Uh, 16 at price changes, and, but there's 72 pending. That jumped like by 10 this past week. Uh, currently, we're down to 215 homes. We lost four from last week. Um, and it's if, if you're within the sound of my voice, uh, you, you're in that range of where those house, those 215 are. Year to date, uh, there's been 110 homes have sold for 21.5 million dollars. Average sale price this, price this year is 195 with 90 days on market. Last year there had been 166 homes that sold for 38 million. Uh, that's 56 more homes, but that's there was that first two weeks is really where the, most of those came from. Average sale price last year was 232 with 101 days on market. Um, so if you're thinking of coming on the market, like I say, if you're one of the ones that expired, if you're going to be expired and you're not happy, give my honey a call. Uh, she's at 870-405-0793. Uh, check out the website, retiredtoarkansas.net. Uh, see, we've got all the MLS is on our website. So if you're just kind of curious and kicking cans and wanting to get some idea what the market's like, uh, you can go on the website and the information, all the MLS information is on our website, and that's a good thing. One thing I like to say about the first time home buyer, yeah. uh, they have a soft spot in my world. Well, first thing, if you're a young couple or just a young single thinking about buying a home, Go talk to your parents and your grandparents and ask them if they have pictures of their first home. Yeah. Look to see where they got their start. And it's not the Taj Mahal true. they live in today. Oh, yeah. Very true, Bob. Very true. You know, take a look at that and, and gear back a little bit. Maybe you can afford something, but you've got to get out of the mindset that it's got to have the, the granite countertops and the stainless steel fixtures. And yeah. it's got to have this and the customized engineered hardwood floor and all that scale back a little bit make it your home for three or four years flip that turn it into a well, down you, that's how you build the equity in the home absolutely you, you buy you don't buy the Taj Mahal and when we our first place when we when I walked in the front door it was just a little cape cut it was it was, God, it was small and we I says well if this wall was gone and that there was a dining room was on the other side I says that would open this room up quite a bit and then from the dining room into the kitchen 
okay. And then there was a stairway there and went upstairs. And I said, well, you could probably put a dormer up here. Yeah. And did the same thing, though. Borrowed money from a family member, and that helped us to get started. Get it done. This has been This Week in Real Estate with Bob Zadora, the Z Team, Century 21 Lee Mac Realty, 870-405-0793 is her phone number. RetireToArkansas.net is her website. Yes, sir. We'll be back with Friday Morning Sports in just a moment.